afternoon, Ghana. Good afternoon, President Nana Akufo Ado. This is Aloma Ingram. I am a Jamaican American Ghanaian. I've been in Ghana for the past 12 years and I have put a school there for the past eight going nine years. I've been having difficulty in Ghana as well as in the United States. I came to Ghana to put that school there to be a part of the development of Ghana. When I sat in my office in my school here in America, I used to read a lot about Ghana and one of the greatest problems Ghana has was in education. And it says that 70% of the Ghanaian population was illiterate. I don't know how true that was, but that made me worried. It, it, it made me wanted to do something, a little bit of something. And what I could think of was to come to Ghana, get with the Department of Education, open a school, which could be a clinic for training teachers in workshops, which I did. At the time, Madame Beatrice Loco was alive. She was the district director of education in Ensa Wam. She embraced me. She had me going around Ghana doing workshops for teachers. We were having a wonderful time. During all that time, I started building that school, which is located in Obusamasi in Ekwa Pim. I'm also a queen mother for the past 11 years in the Ekwa Pim region under Nana Jankwesi, second in command, the Enkoso, um, and the Enkosahima of the Kronti Alice with Nana Krafro Prabran the second. Now I take my title very seriously. Queen of development. Even though initially I came with a, development, a developmental spirit to make a difference. Not just a school for myself, but a school that will encase all the schools, bring all the teachers and preparators together to make a difference. When I came to Ghana, most of the schools on a ridge they didn't have the even proper toilet facilities. I embraced the schools. I brought them into my school. I toured them around. I have put seven toilets over there in that school, Aloma International Academy. The objective of the school was not just to educate students, but to educate, educate teachers, proprietors, and the community at large as to how a modern school should run. Unfortunately, because I mortgaged my home in America, I lost a lot of money. I mortgaged to come there. I didn't get free money or a loan. I so believe in Africa. I so believe in Ghana that I wanted to help to make a change. Even if it's the size of a mustard seed, it should be a productive change. What happened? With the, with the fact that the land that I bought in Ghana was sold like more than 10 times, there was an encroucher who built a house on the land, blocking the view of the school who until today doesn't have a site plan because the land was sold to him even after I, I, I had registered the land. So now I was forced to put something else on the land. I went to Ecopim Roller Bank and borrowed money to build a boarding facility. I have to end up selling them out as homes to pay back the bank because the bank also wanted to foreclose on me. I'm saying all of this to say, now that I have tried to sell the place again three years ago to come back to save my, my home in America because I have a small son at the time who is now 21 years. Had to drop out of college. The people, Nana um, Yar Brody and Nick Koti, who came in as buyers, for the past three years, they have paid me half of the money. They haven't paid the balance. But then they cook up a, a lot of stories that I didn't want to sell again. Nana Akufuado, president of Ghana. I love Ghana dearly. I did not want to leave Ghana, nor the dream of building that school to help to make a difference. I want to be a part of the development of Africa. But because of financial constraint, I had to sell out to come back to America. Nana, I am pleading with you. I have been in court for three years. I left Ghana broke. I'm sitting here speaking to you, pleading to you. I have sent messages to you while I was in Ghana. I got no response. So being on the internet is, a, is, is my last resort, pleading for help. I have been going to court for over a year to collect the balance that these, the petitioners took me to court. 
But they never show up at any court hearing. And when they do show up, the judge is not there. When the judge show up, they are not there or the lawyer is not there. So it's like nobody's always there. It's over here. My life, Nana. My life. Because I love Ghana. Because I want to make a difference in Ghana. I mortgaged my house. I came there. And what am I getting? Today I sit in front of you. While many Ghanaians can eat, I don't have one dollar. Not even a dollar. So I'm sitting here pleading with you. This is my coming to Africa. I need my money. I need to be self-sufficient. I have property in Ghana. Now I have to find a new lawyer because the first lawyer I have, Smila, they've said he's gone to the bench, which is now a judge, so he can't represent me anymore. I had to borrow 2,000 Ghana CDs recently to send to get another lawyer, which has now, I've been told, he drives a V8, so the money for gas to get from Accra to Koforidwa, so I will need to find more money. I am penniless. For someone, and people like myself in the diaspora, who come to Ghana to help to make a difference. When we leave America to come there, we're not coming with sacks of money on our backs. We're coming with love as Africans, the color of the skin, Nana, this color. Not the Lebanese, not the Chinese, but an African descent. I am sent back here by force. I'm sent back here. I'm not homeless because I lost my house. I'm not penniless. I'm in mean, Ghana, I plead for help. The only kind of help I can offer is if I choose to sell my sense myself, open my legs to a man. No, 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 no. I can't do that. So if I don't open up myself to a man, then I get no help. Well, I'm pleading with you, the president. I can't do that. I have my property. It's been tied up for three years. Ah, now I will have no court representation for the 21st. 21st of July, um, June, when they will go back to court again. What are they, they going to do, Nana? Take away my property? Is that what they're going to do? The property that I so love, that I put a school on it, that I've educated so many children, that I was the number one, the only school on that ridge with an A grade, Nana, an A grade, under Mr. Kronz, who was the director of education at the time. Every morning he would stop there. He is an MPP man who promised that I will pay your teachers for what you're doing here. Now, Nana, what do they do? They have sent me footballers. I try with the footballers. What do they do? They just want to play football. They don't want to, to be educated. I'm also pleading with you, with all these football clubs going around, these boys need to be forced into a training school because football, not everybody will make it like a Samoa John. They need to be taught a trade. Let me commend you for the, 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 the free SHS that you're brought in. It's a start, it's piloting. It might not go smooth, but you have be, it has begun. Hail Selassie, the emperor of Ethiopia said in a speech in 1962, democracy or democracy, as you pronounce it, can only come through the education of a people. Nana, education, as you know, is very important in Ghana. Why this Jamaican-born woman, naturalized American, now naturalized Ghanaian, yeah, came with the little that I didn't have, I mortgaged my house to help to make a difference, went to the Department of Education, introduced myself, say, let's come together and fix early childhood education in Ghana. And what did, you, what did I get, Nana? They tore my school down, yeah? They took me to court with lies. Now I'm sitting in America penniless. Someone who has given her entire soul to Ghana. My heart, my spirit, I'm an African woman. Look at what is happening to the Africans in America. And what have I gone through in Ghana? Coming back home to Ghana to help to make a difference. I've been shot. I still have 13 pellets in my body that I walk around with. Now you want to take away my property? All I want is the money to move on with my life. 
I'm not telling anyone who feels the desire and the spirit to say, let me go to Ghana. Ghana is a beautiful country. But it's a place that one has to be very careful. What will you do, Nana, to protect the people like myself who are trying to come in to make a difference in Ghana? People who want to see you succeed with development, Nana. What are you going to do about it? Me, I'm sitting here videotaping this because I feel like I have no other choice because I can't get to you personally. Enough, Nana, is enough. I don't have representation because I can't afford it. I've gone to court for over a year. Nobody shows up. I've spent over $5,000 already with, with one lawyer. I've spent $8,000 before with another one who has encroached on the land. Nana, that's 13,000 Ghana cities. It might be a little bit for some people, but for me, it's a great lot. It's a lot. I don't have that kind of money. All I have is the knowledge in my head, the love in my heart for Ghana as an African woman. When I sit back and I look at what's going on with our black people in the West because of the color of our skin, and when I come home to you, when I come home to you, what do you do to me? You send me back to America penniless. Penniless. God bless the ministry of Tyler Perry. When the men come after me left, right, and center to turn me into a whore that I'm not, because if you want to eat a loma, then you have to give yourself. No, no. But the ministry of Tyler Perry, when I watch those movies, Nana, they hold me up. They hold me up. I'm sitting here. I have a sick mother with diabetes. I'm homeless. The house I'm living in now, I can't pay the rent. And I have $130,000 tied up in a property that I tried to sell. Ghana. Nana. As the story goes, when Kwame and Chromo was uh, overthrown and he heard the news. He said, my Ghana? Now it's my turn, Nana. My Ghana. Why? Nana, I need help. I need Ghana to recognize that when we come there with this color, the Chinese and the Lebanese, they have more talk than us with the color on our skin. And if we can't get justice in the West, where are we going to find it if we can't find it in Africa? Where are we going to find it? Many of us come, we are killed. I was shot. We were, many of us are killed. Adam. But I prayed before taping this. How many diasporans, how many people are going to make it back to Africa? How many people are going to be successful? I remember once when I went to the Ghana immigration to pay for my stay. Every year I have to pay for it. Now I don't have to because I'm now naturalized. But every year I have to pay for my stay. And the Chinese were coming in and out, in and out. But I didn't see any Jamaicans, I didn't see any Trinidadians, I didn't see any black Americans, but the Chinese and the Lebanese were going in and out. And I asked the immigration officer, how come they get their paperwork so easily? And his answer to me was, their money is good. Their money is good. We don't all have to have a lot of money, but we have the education that can come home to Africa and make a difference. My dear president, J.J. Rowling says that Ghana is the, oh, the doorway to Africa. But let me tell you, Ghana is not just the doorway to Africa. Ghana is a heartbeat of Africa. But you can't allow this to happen. You can't allow people like myself to come in here and suffer. My son is now on the road instead of being in college. He's there learning, he went to learn to drive a truck. 
so he can help himself because I am not in a position to even assist my child. But the same people who take me to court, lie on me and have my business, my, my building and uh, property tied up in court. Their children are flying from Switzerland back and forth. Is it that their only child, their child is better than anybody else's child? All I wanted to do was to sell. I don't want to criticize anyone. I don't want to hurt anyone. But I want to tell you what is being done to me in Ghana is wrong. I sit as a queen mother in Kosohima, queen of development. I am wearing a crown of thorns like Jesus did. I want it off my head. I want to say I'm a proud African. I want to say, come to Africa, let's build. Why are you beating me up? Why are you lying to me? Why are you making me suffer? Why are you making my children suffer? Why is my mother suffering as a result of all of what I've tried to do? I came to Ghana with love. Love! I came to Ghana as an African with love. I want justice. And I leave this message with you. All I ask for is respect and justice as a woman. A woman who will come tomorrow and carry the cross for Ghana. I can't give up on Africa. Don't give up on me. Thank you.